Hey friends! So for this week's art lesson, um, we are going to look at using some cardboard and some other materials you might have around your house to make um, your own mask. Our masks are going to be in inspired by the cubism work of Pablo Picasso. I'm going to show you all the different materials you're going to need, but there's a lot of room to be flexible in these. Obviously, we're not in the art room, so I'm not able to provide you all with the exact materials I'm using. So as I present the project today, I'm going to make sure that there's room for you to be flexible with whatever you might have around your house. Uh, one of the reasons I'm using cardboard is because I know um, at least at my house, we've had a couple things shipped to our house because we're really not going outside right now. And so we do have some cardboard that's been floating around. Um, and, you know, cardboard, a lot of the food containers that we have are made out of cardboard. So maybe it's not a shipping box. Um, maybe it's an old cereal box that you're going to turn inside out and use the uh, blank inside portion. So there's lots of flexibility there. Um, but before I start getting to the artist, I want you to know the materials that you need so you can get everything organized. Uh, so one of the things you're going to need is cardboard. Now, obviously, if you don't have cardboard, whether that's a cereal box or a cracker box or something like that, or um, we pretty much used one kind of smallish Amazon box, and it was able to provide all of the cardboard we needed for my whole family to do this project. Um, so if you need something like that. If you don't have that, you can certainly just use construction paper or regular paper. Um, I'd love for you to try to build in a more three-dimensional sculpture type way on this, but if you just wanted to draw a mask that you're inspired by making from this work, that's also totally fine. So you're going to want cardboard first. Um, I took the cardboard box and I kind of cut it all into the different like folds. Um, and so the wider ones are the ones that we use as the base of our face, but then the smaller, skinnier ones are the ones that we cut it, uh, some additional shapes out of to help make certain areas of our mask kind of raised um, into the next level. Um, you also will need, obviously, some scissors. Cutting cardboard can be very difficult, so you might also need an adult helper. Maybe you'll just want to draw all of the shapes onto your cardboard and ask an adult helper to help you to cut those out. You'll need some kind of glue. Um, uh, I think both a glue stick um, and then Elmer's glue, or we have some craft tacky glue. Um, when you're gluing your cardboard, something like this is probably, or Elmer's glue is probably a little bit um, more beneficial. This will be good if you're going to glue some additional paper onto your work. But if all you have is a glue stick, it'll work. You're just really going to want to put a good application of it on, a nice thick application, and then really give it some time to dry so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so glue. Then you're going to need something to help apply some color to your work because you'll notice as we look at the work, there's a lot of color involved. Um, so you have some options here. If you have construction paper, you can use construction paper to help give you that color by cutting shapes out of construction paper. Uh, we use paint at my house. So if you have paint accessible to you, you can do that. Uh, but you can pretty much use anything. Crayons will also color nicely on cardboard. Oil pastel will look great if you have it, although you'll be one, you'll want to be careful not to smear it as you work. Uh, but markers will also work. Um, colors like yellow will probably be harder to show up on the cardboard depending on how dark your cardboard is. So you might want to stick to maybe some darker colors um, to add your color and your details there. And then you'll need a pencil. Um, and potentially um, a darker marker to help you to make your lines stand out as you work. Those are the supplies you'll need. And next, we're going to take a look at the artists that are going to inspire our work today. So first, let's talk about cubism. A cubism is an art movement that was started by Pablo Picasso and George Braque. It was started in Paris in between like 1907 and 1912. Um, it was a way of our artists kind of breaking their pieces down into some of those basic shape elements. A lot of geometric shapes are captured there. The other thing that was very characteristic of cubism is this idea of looking at the object, whether that's a person or a landscape, a guitar or a still life, and capturing that image in multiple different angles all at once. 
So if I was painting a picture of a person, I would not only show some of the features of the face from the front, but I might also show some of those features from the side profile view. All right, a lot of times as you look at the features in the work, you'll see that you know they're not gonna line up. You might have an eyeball here, an eyeball here. One eyeball might be facing forward. The other one will be coming off to the side. So you'll start to notice a lot of those um, things as well as sometimes there's multiple extra eyes or noses because they're showing you all those different angles at once. Our first artist that we're obviously gonna talk about is Picasso because he's considered to be one of the fathers of Cubism. Uh, he experimented in Cubism a lot in many different ways, uh, but he's most well known for a lot of the portraits that he made in Cubism. And a lot of those are of women. You might've seen my one of Dora Maar done in one of my art appreciations where I had my face painted, I even covered it up so I could make my eyeball look like it was going the other way. And the colors were really played up and really playful. Um, and so those portraits of the women that he did are um, really iconic of the Cubism movement. And so I wanna show you a few more of those pieces that he did of the portraits of women. The next artist I'm gonna show you a little bit of their work is Laurent Falco. So this is one of the other artists that my nine to 12 students looked at last year when we did our paper bag Picasso portraits. Um, you can see within Laurent's work um, how clearly we go from Picasso to bringing that in a more contemporary style. It's a little bit more modern, a lot more cleaner lines, um, but still you can see that cubism work. You can see that face shown from multiple different angles. Uh, you can see the geometric shapes that are very clear. Um, and then you can really see those playful heightened colors within Lawrence's work. The last artist we're gonna talk about is going to be new to um, most all my students. His name is Kimmy Cantrell and he lives and works in um, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so Mr. Cantrell really found a love of art in high school. Um, lots of clay work that he was doing just really resonated with him and he really enjoyed it. And although his art teacher encouraged him to go to college and study art, instead he went into business. And so uh, he pursued a career in business for um, quite some time, but really found himself gravitating back to creating and to making art. Um, and so it was back in 1991 that he really started experimenting. And in 1999, he was able to quit his job and move into art full time. And he talks a lot um, about some of his inspirations, uh, one of his inspirations being his grandmother. Um, and he talks about how his grandmother really encouraged him, you know, using this fishing metaphor about just continuing. You got to keep putting your hook back in there. You got to keep trying. Art is not about, you know, catching a fish the first time and having it work out perfectly. And I think we all have experienced that in the art room. It's not always our first try that turns out perfect, but our first try gives us something that's going to encourage us the next time and the next time. And if we keep at it, if we keep throwing our hook in there and fishing, we're eventually going to find something Something that we really enjoy that's going to come out of our art process. Um, he also talks about um, Jackson Pollock being an inspiration, although you don't see it in his work, about his, um, about his art making process. And he said Jackson Pollock called it like breaking the code. And so uh, Mr. Cantrell talks about how, you know, First, he started creating vessels, so bowls and vases. And from there, he started adding faces into inside of his bowl because he felt like faces were just something he really enjoyed. And so he kept exploring that within his artwork. And he said there was one day that he sat down and he did his first mask. So he was like digging into the clay and forming the eyes and the face uh, features. So he did one and he set it aside and he did another. And it kind of built upon what he did the first time and he enjoyed it set it aside and he did a third one. And it was on the completion of the third one that he broke down in tears because he said he finally realized and found some art that was truly his. He figured out what that style of his was going to be and how he was going to build on that and really find uh, joy and expression through his art making. 
Um, so I want you to look at his work. So his work is done in ceramics, so it's clay. Um, it'll look a lot more like the work we're gonna do in cardboard and that you'll see the clay pieces, how he might lay um, an eye made out of clay on top of the base and kind of build that up to create some layers uh, to create some relief that comes off of your bottom layer. So it's not flat in the way that the paintings by Laurent Falco and Pablo Picasso are. There is some depth there. There's some form that's being created by working in a three-dimensional way with three-dimensional material. So if you are going to do this process in cardboard, you'll see how that builds up. So I want you to look at that and I want you to look at his work and see what do you see that's similar to the work of Laurent Falco? in the work of Pablo Picasso. Can you see how they're all related? All right, let's get started making our own. So you can see the example of one that I worked on yesterday. I had a lot of fun making this. And I think by looking at it, you can already see where there's certain pieces I cut out of cardboard to build up off of my base here. So I have up to three layers if you count my base. On my eyeballs, I have a layer and then the people here even creates a third. But most, it's just two layers, a few pieces that are sitting on top of the bottom. Uh, you can see I used a variety of different colors. I think you can also notice how my eyes kind of are that uneven, you know, facing different ways. You can see where I played with a little bit of pattern within my work. That was part that was inspired by the work of Kimmy Cantrell. Um, and then you can just see the kind of, I really went crazy with my colors. I wanted to kind of have a little bit of a rainbow feel to it. So I did want to touch on each of the individual um, colors of the rainbow here as I played around with my piece. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm really excited to make another one and to see what you all create. So I'm gonna set this one aside and show you some of the basic steps that you can get prepared to make your own. So the first thing you're gonna need is one piece of cardboard. This is a kind of a skinnier piece, which is fine. It doesn't have to be a facial, sh facial shape at all. And I think you probably noticed that in looking at the work of our three artists. Now, as I'm starting to plan what my uh, mask is gonna look like, I do need to look at what my features might look like. Right, so I have some ideas here of a bunch of different eyes, noses, and mouth shapes for you to take a look at that might help you to get started on yours. Obviously, it can kind of look however you want. It can lean more towards realistic, it can be a little bit more fan, um, kind of fantasy feeling. Um, you can really dig into that cubism vibe by really making everything kind of crazy and shaped all different ways. Uh, so if you're curious to use any of these, you can pause the video right here to leave these up on the screen as you start to draw yours. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you are gonna wanna get a sketch going. I'm gonna sketch mine out just in um, a Sharpie so you can see because as you're working in a pencil on your cardboard, it is really um, hard to see, especially for you all to be able to see through the video here. So the first thing I'm gonna do um, is kind of create some sort of head shape here. So I'm just gonna give what is gonna be, you know, the top and then the bottom shape. And then when I cut it out, I don't have to worry about the sides. Those are just gonna come off here. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, I think I'll probably go for a, my nose first to kind of break my face up a little bit. So I kind of have the bridge of the nose come really far down and then my nostrils are gonna go on either side. It gets playful, I'm kind of breaking up the page like that. Then for my eyes, I'm really gonna go for two different distinct styles here. Uh, so my first one here, Now you are gonna wanna really think about doing this in pencil because as you cut out your cardboard shapes, they might be very similar to what you're sketching out here, but they're probably not gonna be exact. So if you go like I'm starting here with Sharpie, you're gonna maybe be frustrated by the fact that you're gonna have lines that stick out underneath 
uh, your cardboard as you cut it out. So it is really smart to start in pencil and then have the pencil lines on here and form your shapes on your cardboard or your paper. All right, so I got one eye, but I did want to make the other one a little different. So I think I'm going to bring it a little bit further down to play with kind of that offset feeling. This one, I'm going to put my eyelashes underneath and that kind of change there. All right. I like how this is going. I'm definitely going to want some eyebrows. Eyebrows are one of those things I think are really fun to cut out of cardboard. Uh, they're a simple way to kind of get that raised shape off. All right. The last thing I need to do is to create um, my mouth, the lips for my mask here. Um, and I did the other ones kind of to the side. I think I'm going to give this one a little bit more fuller feeling mouth here. All right, that kind of gives me the basics to go on. I might add some extra details here, maybe by cutting um, a circle out, give myself a nice big cheek there, got that big blank space here. So my next few steps are going to be cutting these pieces, or actually redrawing these pieces onto other cardboard or um, construction paper, and then I'll start cutting them out um, and building them up here uh, to create some of that depth within my work. All right, so I've started to cut some of my cardboard and my construction paper here. Um, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking my paper or my cardboard and I'm setting it near my sketch and I'm trying to mimic as much as I can the shape that I see there. Um, the best recommendation I can get is if you really like this shape that you have to try to mimic it as best you can to be understanding that it might not match up completely, but if you make it a little bit bigger, then what's there, you can always keep trimming it down, all right? Because if I start and I make it too small right away, then I can't add back to it and I'll have to start all over again. So um, I'm sketching it out, I'm cutting it out. Like I said, for those of you who might need adult help with some of your bigger scissors, because cardboard can be a little trickier if you're using like an old Amazon box, um, although it should be maybe a little bit easier if you're using stuff like um, a cereal box, um, ask an adult for help just so that you can get it cut without too much frustration as you work. All right, so you can see it's starting to build up. I've got a couple different layers here. Uh, probably the next step, I'm gonna start to draw um, my eyeballs on another piece of cardboard so I can really build that up. Um, but I think I have enough things coming up off my mat that I'm kind of happy about. Uh, the next step is gonna be to maybe cut some other things out of construction paper if I'd like, or really just start going in with my markers um, and adding that color.
Okay, you can see that I have cut some construction paper out. I have all my layered pieces up here. I kind of feel like at this point, I am ready just to um, switch over to my markers and give it the rest away of the color. I'm not gonna paint this one today. I did the paint yesterday. Um, I'm ready just to use markers to color everything the rest of the way in. So like I said, I might wanna avoid some of my um, lighter color markers. I'm gonna have a harder time getting them to show up, but I can certainly still get plenty of color using markers um, if I don't have paint available at my house. And crayons also work really well on cardboard. Um, uh, for crayons, probably your lighter colors will actually stand out more. So maybe you'll wanna use a combination of the two to really get whatever effect you are going for. So now that I've cut those out of cardboard, I'm really gonna add back some of my details here. I like to do some color blocking as I'm working where I kind of stick some of my lighter, uh, I'm sorry, my similar colors near each other. There's analogous colors, the ones next to each other on the color wheel. Um, I just kind of think it's fun to um, play around with color like that. It's one of my favorite things to do. So you can see I'm kind of sticking my blue by my blue, my greens by my greens. I got my warm colors down there for my mouth. But I'm still going to go in and I'm not just going to leave it like that. I do want to add some really fun details. One of the things I like about um, Kimmy Kentrell's work are some of those kind of patterned details. So he punches a lot of work out because he's working with clay. So he might take those circle pieces and he would actually cut these out of clay. That would be a really difficult thing to do with our thicker cardboard. So just drawing them on will still give me some of that cool same effect here. And I can add in some details to my work. So you can see I've got a lot to do, but I have a really fun start here that I'm really enjoying. And I'm gonna keep working at that until I kind of get to a product that I feel is finished and completed. This is the one I made yesterday. I can't wait to hang this up. Show you, my, I had my husband Nathan do one. I love the way that his turned out. Uh, he kind of added some extra pieces at the bottom here. Uh, he wanted to make his longer than the piece of cardboard he had. So he just kept adding to it and was able to piece the cardboard together to kind of build it up. All right, Ruby made one as well. I love the way that she used some patterning here, um, really played with the color. She took some different color paints and kind of had a gradient, kind of some color blending in the background there. And of course, Tilly made one as well. Uh, I think Tilly still wants to go through and kind of add back some of those details with the darker black so that we can really see the outlines of her eyes She's got some really cool eyelashes going on and some pupils in the middle there. So she'll probably still finish uh, going back and doing that. She was waiting for everything to dry. All right, so you can see there's a lot of options here to make a mask. You can really be creative and go after whichever style that you would like. And I can't wait to see what you make and how you decide to put your mask all the way together. All right. What are you gonna make? How's your mask gonna look? I'm really excited to see if you decide to follow this through, even if you just decide to make a cool sketch of a mask kind of in that cubism style. If you make one, 
please find a way to share it with me. I really do miss seeing all of your artwork and your creative ideas. Remember, your mask doesn't have to look anything like mine. This is room for you to be creative and kind of take the different inspirations, whether it's an inspiration from what I did, inspiration from the work of Kimmy Cantrell, inspiration from Laurent Falco, or inspiration from Pablo Picasso. There's a lot of room to find some cool inspiration or even just in your everyday life. If you make some work, I'm going to put a video up on Thursday. We're going to make Thursday new show until Thursdays. So if you decide to make something, you can share it with me right away if you're excited. Or if you want to wait till Thursday, I'll show you how to share your artwork with me by filming a video or just sharing a photo to post. I really hope you enjoy making art at home um, and creating some sort of cubism style mask. I really miss you all and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye.